Hi guys, we're finishing our first post-pandemic tour and right now we're in Odessa. So we went to four cities, uh, Kiev, Kharkov, Odessa, Nikolaev. And here's Chris, he survived the entire <laughs> tour. So I just want to ask him some questions and see what, he, you know, what his tour experience. So first of all, where are you from, Chris? Well, I live in central Florida right now, uh, in between Daytona Beach and Orlando. So it's a fairly short flight for you, compared, you know, from Phoenix <laughs> in, uh... Comparing to Phoenix, yes. Actually, it was, a, it was a challenge in traveling during the pandemic, because I'm sure, you know, airlines and everything else was complicated. But otherwise, like crossing the border, there were any issues with uh, COVID tests, insurance? Just because I've traveled over here before, just knowing about the website, I did get my insurance prior to leaving. Also, I mean, even without the vaccination, all I had to do was just the test itself. Um, really was not a big major issue at all. I didn't have, because I already had everything lined up. Oh, that's good. So you mentioned it's not your first tour, or Correct. what tour have you done before? I was here in July of 2019, so two years ago. Yeah, it was our tour. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good to, you know, good to do another tour together yes. again. So yeah. It's fun. Uh, so what do, you, uh, what do you think of Ukraine now? Has anything changed again since pandemic? It's a little bit different in different ways, but not really majorly different. Because here, I mean, even though you go to different places, you have to wear a mask at sometimes, whether you're in a convenience store and then you go to the cashier and it's like you have to put a mask on. But otherwise, it's been pretty relaxed in many ways. I'm flying over here, you had to wear a mask. Outside of that, it hasn't been really strict where people are coming after you, so. Yeah, I know there's some major cities like Kiev or Odessa are more strict with wearing a uh, face mask in uh, public places like grocery store or yeah, bank. Cause in, um, but the Nikolai couldn't care less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> in Kiev at um, the mall at Gulliver Road, right by the hotel, you had to have them, they would check the temperature walking in and also wear a mask. But here in Odessa, Kharkov or Nikolai, it wasn't really so strict. And speaking of which, uh, check, checking temperature and masks, so when you came to your first social, what did you discover as far as security, you know? Well, my first social uh, on this tour was Kiev. I ended up getting to the social late because I was on a date, and she had mentioned, oh, if you need to go, we can cancel the food. Or I'm like, no, 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 I'd rather spend time with you. So I ended up um, having to get, I think it was an Uber to the site yeah. itself, and good thing for Olga where contacted me for because it was a different location she came out and was able to um, ask more take me over to where the social was yeah, you're, a little, you're a little late but yeah we we're check, <laughs> checking temperature and women when they were entering they were wearing masks but they would take it off as soon as they enter because we we're serving food and drinks there mm. so yeah in that regard I don't think anything really changed yeah so except okay. well I'd say maybe with the amount of women. So what was your favorite social? Which one out of four did you like the most? Well, Odessa was fun. I mean, there was less women, but still, it was enjoyable. Um, Kiev was interesting, the location at it. Kharkov was nice, except for like sometimes trying, it did get loud at different points. It was a nice club though. Definitely, and uh, we did have uh, you know, a lot of women in Kharkov, so it might be a little hard to mingle, from, go from table to table. It w in different ways, yeah. I mean, even though I think you said that there was a large amount at Kiev, it was spread out, but Kharkov, there was a, a lot of women there, and you really wouldn't have known it because I guess the fluctuation throughout mm -hmm. the night, people coming and going, but still, easily to move around and talk to people. And for those two cities, I did have women come came up to me where I would say here in Odessa, when they mentioned about your uh, interpreter kind of like being your bodyguard, she really was, and in a good way, because kind of like when somebody would come up to me and it's like and she's like no <laughs> let's go over here so it, it was good because sometimes people will come up to you and you just sort of like uh, I'll be a little nice and did you meet anyone special during any of those socials I've met some different people I will say there's one woman in Kiev that she was on my list that I sent in and so went on three dates and plan on seeing her again when I go up there um, Hawk have one on a few dates with some people from the socials. Nikolaev did go on a date, and she was also from my list. Um, had to have an interpreter, so 
she understood some English, and with some things we use Google Translate, then here in Odessa, um, we've gone on some a few dates also, and like it's tonight I'm going on two other ones. One of them was I met at the social. Actually, both of them were there. One was on my list when I sent in, and she was also at the social too. So. So do you think social is an effective way to meet people or individual introductions are better? I think it'd be a combination because definitely with the social there's a lot of women there and you can easily meet people because um, sometimes like this time of the year coming across a lot of women on vacation. It becomes a combination. I think they're both good and they both have pros and cons because especially you can like with your list you send in you can figure out like English level and at the social you'll find out like if they speak English or not and some women also on your first date feel much more comfortable to have a translator because of the comfort level it's a strange man and you know go <laughs> yeah and, you never know who you're yeah. meeting could be Ted Bundy you know and it's perfectly fine because that's happened before and then finding out that she speaks English understands it but I can understand if I was in her positions like this is a strange a complete stranger so the comfort level yeah, I hear that a lot from guys, oh, she speaks English, so there is no way there should be interpreter on a date, but well, look at this from her point. Yeah, you know, yeah. She's meeting you for the first time, you know, I mean, she doesn't know what to expect, she's heard a lot of horror stories, uh, but once she, she knows you and she's comfortable with you, most likely the interpreter will get lost somewhere. Along yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where even at the socials, having an interpreter, if they find out, oh, she speaks English, they kind of like move off to the side and let you just communicate, and sometimes, you know, they can also be to a point of, if you're talking with somebody, you already have something set up, like, hey, I really need to use the restroom right now, and then kind of like to move on and all that. Because sometimes you can talk for a really long time or if you want to move on, so. So how's your uh, overall dating experience in Ukraine been? It's been good. Um, it's a great experience because being in a different country, especially for me, I like history. It's very fascinating. And, you know, you mentioned that when you went on a date, you know, the whole thing costed $18 for two, uh, you know, Sunset River cruises. Yeah. You know, so dating can be fairly expensive in Ukraine, so a lot of guys are concerned about the budget. So it can be really expensive, can be, you know, you can do it on a budget as well, so it just really depends. Definitely, because, I mean, depending um, where you go and you can decide to, like bowling. I've gone two dates. Uh, I've gone bowling and a lot of women, actually one of them uh, that I went on up in Kiev, which I'll see again, she was worried about her nails, put tape on her nails to oh. cover them up. Um, but even with that, bowling for like shoes in like an hour is maybe $14, but it's still fun. It's, an act, it's something active that you can get kind of competitive with each other and have fun and interact because um, sometimes or just walking. A lot of women walk, so it's perfectly fine. Yeah, bowling is a great idea. It takes off a little bit of pressure, you know, uh, like compared to when you sit at the restaurant yeah. and you have to focus on the conversation, but that's a little... Where a uh, date I went on in Nikolaev, I went on two dates with her in one day. The first date where she was formally dressed up, had a dress on, and then later on she had jeans on and a t-shirt and went bowling and much more relaxed and then you could de I definitely saw more of her playfulness at, like with the attitude and everything. Even with, through a translator you could still tell and, and even with dates, I mean, I know the big question is, I've watched the shows and people ask like, how do you know if she's into you? It's like, well, you can kind of feel chemistry if you're relaxed around the person because it doesn't matter with language. I mean, in the United States you can meet somebody and if there's tension there it's not going to work but yeah, and you're speaking the same language. In here, you can go on a date and realize there's nothing. Or you can go on a date and still feel relaxed and comfortable. And yeah, it's nice. And, and I'm assuming you got the contact information uh, for the people who met to get to stay in touch when you go yeah. to the States. Because for my first tour, it was different than this tour. Looking at it this time is, instead of trying to focus on one person like I did the first time here, um, meet different women, feel, get the ones that I'm, I feel comfortable with and her also with me, then I just want to st uh, stay in touch through Viber because it's free. You can call, you can also translate, you just hit it and it translate also. You can send pictures, um, do video chats, but it's just 
having to keep in touch with them and then find out where it goes from there. And then, so if it progresses on for anybody, then I can look at coming back over during that time. So, yeah. You can always take a vacation, you know, once, you know, a relationship progress with yeah. someone, you can always go somewhere. Yeah. In a third country. Meet someplace in locally or whatever it may be, or if it's Christmas time, attempt to go try snowboarding. Ah, I have to <laughs> think about Bukovel then, or you want um, to do actually somewhere in Europe, because Ukrainian citizens can travel to Europe uh, visa yeah. free, so you can try like some mountains, you know. In Europe, in Italy or Austria. Yeah, because I came over uh, Christmas time last year, went to Bukaville, attempted skiing. It was painful, but anybody that <laughs> Why skis. Why is that? I'm just uh, curious. <laughs> um, bad knees uh. from playing sports throughout the years. But for anybody that goes skiing, it definitely is inexpensive. Um, might try snowboarding next, but I mean, there's a lot of places you can go to. Yeah, Ukraine has a lot to offer, you know, as far as uh, places to go to. You can always go to Lviv and, you know, have some historical experience yeah. to go to castles and you can go to hot springs and you can go skiing and all kind of stuff in the wintertime. In the summertime in Arcadia, you can go out if you want to go to a club, you can yeah. go to a club with all kinds of activities. But in other cities too, Kiev has a lot to offer, yeah. you know, it's the capital, there are many things to do. So what other da date ideas would you give uh, to guys? Uh, uh, when I was here before, I, be, I mean, I've gone horseback riding. I did do a cooking class because when I was um, dating somebody, um, I don't know, the office manager here is really awesome, uh, suggested a cooking class, so that was really good. And with me, I mean, I teach culinary arts, so having a cooking <laughs> background, it's also nice. You could teach that class. I yeah, so. I could have. Uh, well, except it was uh, more, it was Ukrainian food, but still. The nice thing is, when you're doing something that you know how to do, then she can see that and understand like, oh, okay. Well, so a lot of options for dating here, yeah. guys. So would you like to add anything else? Or do we not? Um, one of the things definitely you hear a lot is, I mean, a lot of people like to sit behind the keyboard and waste their money sending letters. Take the money, get on a plane, come over here because it's a great vacation. You get to meet many different women. You might not have that opportunity in the United States to do that. I mean, just the women here is really nice because a lot of the women are really laid back. Um, family values. If you go to Walmart, you see women kind of like walking in with their uh, house shoes on and sleep pants. You don't see that here, really. Um, just get on the plane, come over here, take the risk. I mean, instead of going to the seminars, going to uh, watching all the like the Monday night shows, nothing wrong with them, <laughs> I enjoy them. Um, take the leap of faith, because if you're not, if nothing's happening back home, whether it's United States or any other country, come over. It's very open, it's relaxed, it's a great opportunity, and it's a great vacation too. So th thank you yeah. for doing this interview today. It was you're a welcome. pleasure. Yeah. Thank you.